Today on Garage Athletes, we talk about the truth behind injuries in CrossFit and all functional fitness with Dr. Yuri Fato. This is Garage Athletes Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Justin Metz, with Nick Rhodes, Brandon Phillips, and our guest today is Yuri Fato. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So well um, Yuri is a professor <laughs> at uh, Kennesaw State University, and um, we're going to talk about some of the controversy in research studies that have been done with functional fitness, um, specifically CrossFit, and, um, and, and what's gone into that, because there's been a lot of talk on the internet and everything else. And, um, and I think Yuri has some really cool insight because uh, that's what he does. So, um, Yuri, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, I'm a uh, faculty member over at Kennesaw State University. I have a PhD in exercise physiology from the University of Tennessee, so don't hold that against me. Anybody out there? Um, <laughs> go Bulls. <laughs> that's right. Go Bulls. Uh, I know I'm in the South and, and you know, Georgia County, uh, country. Roll Tide. So, no. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I started, uh, got involved with CrossFit about two years or so. Um, I started doing it for myself, and then um, I started looking at injury rates and uh, how – um, if the prevalence of injury was uh, significant and what's uh, been told in the internet and, and some of the, um, the normal media outlets, if you will. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing. Our research group, uh, there's about two or three of us doing the, that kind of research, and we're looking at um, from injuries to physiological adaptations to CrossFit training to psychological variables. So we're looking at pretty much the gamut uh, of how CrossFit specifically or high-intensity training, but more specifically CrossFit um, modality, um, it's, it's changing the, the fitness industry, if you will. Yeah. Can, can you talk about like some of the things that you do in this study to find that kind of stuff out? Yeah, I mean, I'll let Brandon talk a little bit about it. He was uh, one of our, uh, oh. our, our participants a, a while back. But uh, well, well, now before we get going, we should say, Yuri, you actually are a CrossFitter, so maybe a little bit biased. But I mean, obviously, when you do your studies, you try and be as unbiased I as am, you can. I, uh, I am a CrossFitter. I do practice CrossFit. I, I am a uh, level one um, trainer, certified trainer, if you will. If you want to, I know that's a little bit of a uh, an issue with how you mentioned that, but I am a level one <laughs> coach. Um, and, 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 but I, I am, I stay objective. Uh, my goal is to, to really just inform the public and, and I'm a lonely scientist uh, in Kennesaw, Georgia, trying to, to find answers to, to these questions that are important for, uh, from a fitness standpoint. Yeah. So, yeah, so go ahead, tell us. Um, so, Nick, to answer your question, we, we're looking at <coughs> a, a little bit of things, uh, a little bit of a lot of things, if you will. We're, we're, we have several studies going on right now, uh, specifically looking at the injury rates or looking at number of injuries of individuals who participate in CrossFit. So uh, we have different samples. We've conducted uh, research, same survey for about three years now. So we have somewhat of a retrospective look. Uh, of individuals and basically we're just asking people you know do you practice uh, CrossFit and have you ever been injured and if you have been injured what kind of injuries have you sustained? So um, over three years. So over three years. So this is like no bullshit. You guys aren't just out on the streets doing surveys. Like no. this is like <laughs> legit. <laughs> this is pretty legit. We have, uh, and we could talk a little bit more in detail later on about uh, the actual specifics of the study. But we you know we have uh, since 2012 we started, and uh, one survey we have over 700 participants. The other survey mm-hmm. we have over 900, and the current survey right now we have over 1,100 responses uh, um, going on right now. So. Um, it's it's pretty legit. Is it nationwide or is it kind of more local? It's worldwide, actually. Oh, worldwide. It's, uh, wow, okay. It's uh, it's up in the internet. Um, you know, it's a it's a Google document that we sort of uh, let everybody who is has an affiliate. Uh, I know Brandon has shared several times. Uh, several people in California. Um, our the the study that we're working on right now. It's we have. Uh, I think it's about 80% or 85% from the U.S. and we have about 15% from around the world. So there's, oh. you know, there's it's a pretty varied. So um, someone, survey. so someone could actually go out and look at that. Where would they go to? to um, yeah. So if you, <laughs> you'll have to go online. Uh, I don't have an actual link. Um, we'll get know, the link the and we'll put it. But we could definitely put it yeah. in the pod, uh, podcast. The only, the only caveat to that is because the open is starting right now. We we try to do the surveys from December through the first week of the open, oh, so that, that if someone gets hurt, it doesn't influence the the results. So yeah, yeah. so there is some parameters that we try to hold sure. on to, so so that it's not open year round, if you will, because that that will definitely affect. 
So that's interesting. So what are you finding? I mean, I'm sure there's every every um, time you do a, a research or an article or a study, um, you've got some purpose that you're wanting mm-hmm. to go through. And I know there's been a couple studies, and, and you always hear about the bad ones, right? Like I know there's one particular that was circulating around. And actually, what can you tell us about that, that one study that, that there ended up being a lawsuit about, and it was sure. up in Ohio? Sure. Um, so that study came out uh, about two years ago, if I recall. It, was, uh, coming, it came out of Ohio State University. Um, and it was published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning, um, which is a, a journal from the National Strength and Conditioning Association. And, and really the study in and on itself was relatively positive. Um, it showed uh, positive results in, in oxygen consumption or cardiovascular endurance, as well as uh, body composition for the participants who, who um, engage in, in the project. I think I, I, if I recall, is that either 12 or, or 10 to 12 weeks uh, of CrossFit training, <coughs> and they were measuring oxygen consumption that sort of thing. Really, the the biggest problem with that particular research study was there was one sentence in which the author said that, and I'm not, um, you know, quoting. Yeah, I'm really paraphrasing. I can't remember exactly the numbers, but I believe it was a uh, about 16 percent of the individuals who participated in the study uh, never came back for the second visit because they died. B- yeah, exactly. <laughs> they all got wrapped up. They all got wrapped up. Right. So really, it was just you know they they said they had gotten injured. Um, and when when CrossFit headquarters started asking a little bit more questions, really just to find out if if truly was was an injury or what what it was, um, it ended up being that the people never came back just because they just didn't. Um, you know, we unfortunately research when you have to do multiple visits that tends to happen. It's called attrition rate. So um, they assumed that they were injured. I think assume is it's a you know it's a big word, and, I, and I'm not part of that research group, but. Yeah. Um, you know, they just really just wrote down a sentence that said the people didn't come back because they got injured. Without, yeah, without yeah. evidence, yeah. Right, yeah. That, and that's that was the premise by which, um, you know, headquarters as well as the CrossFit yeah. affiliate um, where the study was being done kind of came back and said, well, you know, that's gonna hurt my business, you know, because yeah. these people are now are training here and now, you know, you're saying that 16% of the people who are training here sure. are getting hurt. So yeah, that's, that's a big deal. And like when, when you start talking about like, you know, something like that, just, just a little thing, that one sentence can it make is. such it's a just, huge yep. impact on an entire industry, right. you know? Oh, hello, phone calls. Sorry about that. <laughs> He's a very popular man. That's actually somebody calling right now <laughs> yeah. from Ohio State. I just well, call her. <laughs> you're on the line. That was HQ I calling. That was HQ calling. Yeah, we're live, actually. Uh, we could have taken our first call on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. We should have just done that. Mom? No, no, I, just, I just always find it interesting that you know, people just always try to nitpick the bad things yeah. when it comes to anything that's popular at the time. You know, like take football. Like football, who knows what the injury rate is for a professional football player? It's probably more than uh, – it's probably almost 100% of the time somebody gets injured playing oh, football. It is. If you're and a pro even, football that's player. That's even in high school football. I mean, I was a high school coach. I mean, high school, I mean, even high school sports, people get injured all the time, but they just take this one training methodology that's taking over, you know, basically the world, and they're just trying to find something nitpicky about right. that. Well, you that's know, anytime that's something huge blows up, you know, you're going to yeah. find people that are going to come out and try and tear it apart. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you that's, it, that's the good thing, though, about like what Yuri's doing, because I, th- I think I remember taking your <coughs> thing and you were asking, is there pre existing mm-hmm. injuries? And I, I think that's a lot of things that people don't look at. Like sure. they start CrossFit and they're trying to do, you know, functional movements, but they have any kind of imbalance in the body. Like Justin and I talk about this all the time when we talk about coaching athletes or anything else. If you don't correct those imbalances, right. it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, right. you could go for a, a 5K run and you're going to hurt your ankle sure. or hurt your, you know, knee or something like that. And all of a sudden, what is, what is 5K running? The worst thing in the world yes you know, right. I mean, absolutely <laughs> yes <laughs> you are correct <laughs> if you're trying to make gains you really don't want to go for a 5k run. metabolic conditioning <laughs> is a disease you get from running yeah right. that's correct right you're, yeah, you're the professor sure okay. absolutely we can make we can call it whatever you want <laughs> yeah but i mean that's what that's one thing that like we've really tried to focus on i think that's a good thing that like crossfit trainers now are starting to get into and they're starting to see the value in not just doing metcons all the time mm-hmm. but helping correct correct movement patterns right it's hard to do that though because 
because a yeah. lot of people that like or that want to do CrossFit, they want to do the glamorous part of CrossFit, yeah. and you know, and that's that's a whole nother thing we can oh, get yeah, into yeah, or yeah. whatever. But, um, but yeah, it it is definitely one of those those obstacles, and and it again, it, it kind of comes down to almost like semantics, mm-hmm. like you know. What what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Where were you at before? Right. Like, there's so many. It depends oh, in yeah. different scenarios. Like, it makes it makes the studies have to be. You have to be really, really on top of your game sure. to make the study relevant. So my my curiosity is how many studies out there, you know, like just aren't relevant because of where they're at. And and I think a lot of people when they read them. They, they take a study and they take one thing like that and they, they make it as it's, it's a, you know, a smash on something or a praise on something when in reality you just have to, you have to read that article and come up with something on your own. Right. You know what I mean? Well, and I think that the, the biggest thing too is like, you know, it's just one study. You know, that particular yeah, study right. for the, the Ohio State study, if you want to go back to that, I mean, they had, I don't know, I think it was like 50 people. You know, so <laughs> there's, I mean, think about 10,000, over 10,000 affiliates around the world, and that's 50 people. So you can't really generalize that, you know, and I don't think sometimes people forget some of that stuff. And, and, you know, even in our studies, we have 700 people, but that's not where near, that's just a small percentage of people around the world who are, you know, taking place, you know, taking part in, in, in CrossFit methodology. Sure. So it, it's, you gotta take it within, within what it is, read the study, understand what they're talking about, either mine or, or somebody else's study, whatever you're looking at, and just take it within the context of those 100 people, 50 people, whatever that study number was, you can't generalize it for, for everyone. And that's one of the things that as researchers, we always have to do. That's one of the limitations that it's in every study that you look at. It's very specific to who you're working with and what you're doing. And it's not gonna be the same for everyone. So, and forgive me for, for ignorance if, if this is being done, but I'm just curious, is there a group or, or someone that is taking all of these studies, reviewing them, and then you know, kind of making a, a broad brush stroke of generalization based on all of them? Because I would feel as though if, if you took 50 different studies with four to 500 people in each of them, you would get a much better idea if you would kind of make a generalization across all of them. I think that the uh, the problem is right now is that we don't have the number of studies to do that. Um, you know, why is that? We we just don't. I think you know CrossFit's very very new in, in the in the big scheme of things. CrossFit is new. The CrossFit methodology is new. And and you know I've been working on the project. And when when I first met Brandon was what two years ago with uh, you right. know one of my students. And you know I'm I'm still working on that project. Yeah. You know we have over a hundred participants. But in order for me to be able to do something that it's that it's important and 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 really answers a question specific it takes time you know um, in that particular study that I'm referring to we had individuals come in one time do a max test and then they had to come back another week and do a 15-minute workout so and that's scheduling issues either you know scheduling for myself for for the athlete to come into the lab scheduling with the lab so you know they take time you know so so I think what you'll see is in the next couple of years if if more people get involved, is you're going to see more number of studies come out. I can um, imagine 700 people in a study. It was hard to get the four of us out here to do this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> well, so now let's go into the study. So, like you were doing your max test and your and uh, basically like a VO2 max. Mm-hmm. I like, remember doing that. It was awful. At least the 15. <laughs> I love 15 minute MRAP. So that wasn't as bad for me. But the max effort test was the worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> and uh, but go into detail like about what you were studying those two tests and then uh then after that we'll go over like specific uh, examples like i know you've had myself petro and, and a couple of other uh, games athletes mm-hmm. uh participate in that study and then uh several regional competitors and then yeah. just your local you know everyday crossfitter that goes and just seeing uh, what what you've had out of that yeah so i mean that study particularly we're looking at uh i think we have our total now it's about 112 athletes both uh like brandon was uh, was saying both you know game level athletes to your general you know mom pop mom pop execs right from coming out out of you know just so they do two or three days a week um and really what we're looking at is maximal extra maximal capacity um on the treadmill test and yeah you know the really we can't really compare obviously the treadmill test to a 50 minute amrap if you will but but we're really only interested in what is the maximal 
cardiovascular capacity. Um, so we put them on the treadmill, put a mask on. Um, you know, this is the part, the, the part that Brandon really enjoyed. Uh, put a mask on <laughs> and, and ask them to breathe. Any, let's get you mask. breathing heavy and anything, put something over your any, mouth and nose. Anything, anything <laughs> with running. If it was, you know, anything else but running, it'd be all right. I would imagine each one of your legs weighs 60 pounds. Yeah, so it to run takes on a, a lot treadmill, to pick those and up. And it keeps getting higher and higher and higher. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> the that's incline how, keeps, yeah. resi- keeps going up every minute. I so, love Imams, except that Imam. <laughs> <laughs> Except that one. <laughs> so we put them on the treadmill. We're trying to find a comfortable running speed, if you want to call it comfortable. And then, uh, like you know, Brandon was saying, every minute it grade goes up one percent until you really can't go anymore. Um, in the middle of that, every other minute or every minute before, once the elevation is going up, we'll ask you to stop. We'll do a lactate measurement. So we actually are measuring uh, lactate levels. And really what we're trying to find there is what your maximal capacity is and what that lactate threshold is. You know, we, we cross here talk about, um, you know, lactate training and this and that and the other, but we really never really know what that lactate may be unless we actually test it. Yeah, I'm curious about that too, because I know there's a lot of people that talk back and forth about lactate threshold and how it's not actually lactic acid built up that gives you the pain and this and that or whatever. So how do you guys address that in your, in your sub? Because we don't actually know know what that is right, right that causes that pain well we do and, and we could have a whole different podcast on Ooh, as nice. to yeah. what that is but uh, <laughs> basically we're just measuring a a, uh, a <clears throat> blood sample is a very small blood sample out of, out of a finger it's just a finger prick um, and we're able to you know we're able to um, measure so after it that they way. beat the shit out of you they they cut you <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty that's much. awesome just a yeah where do i sign up you're bleeding and what'd you call and, me nick everything else. <laughs> that's so bad and it's so not just bad. one time i mean we do it um, literally every minute <laughs> we're doing times. yeah basically and, it, and didn't, it didn't go 18 minutes i'll tell you that it's <laughs> <laughs> an 18 percent incline i did oh. not make it to that so, so once we get through that then the second visit is a 15 minute amrap and and what we're trying to do is trying to sort of mimic a regular work workout that most people would do but you know someone like Brandon may be really really good at very short AMRAP but you have another athlete who may really be good at really uh, you know medium size or, or medium distance um, or time issue so what we're trying to do is a 15 minute AMRAP and we have three different um, exercises that, that we're doing and we're really doing the same thing after each round we'll measure um, lactate measures and we also you always wearing that mask so we're actually measuring oxygen consumption throughout the, uh, the entire period and really all we're trying to do is trying to compare um, how does an athlete like Brandon will compare to to a regular Joe like myself and in, in a CrossFit uh, workout standpoint and really compare men and women elite level intermediate or or a, a novice athlete have you guys found anything yet or is it still going on like it's still going on yeah. I really haven't looked at the data in detail but what we <coughs> do find out is that um, you know vo2 max may not necessarily or maximal oxygen consumption may not necessarily have a good relation um, or correlation if you will um, to how many rounds you end up doing in that 15 minute AMRAP. So um, the athlete who who's- And w- what is the AMRAP like? Is it the like AMRAP, high, it's not high skill movements? Um, no, it's a 250 meter row, um, 20 kettlebell swings, two different weights for men and women, and then um, dumbbell thrusters. Again, two different weights Sounds for men excellent. and women. So it's a it's fun one. Uh, it's a challenging one, but at the same time, it's something that everyone can do. And we needed to find something that wasn't skilled enough um, that you know your it regular doesn't bottleneck it, people exactly yeah. exactly because the ultimate goal is for people to do 15 <coughs> minutes regardless of mm-hmm. your skill level mm-hmm. um, so we were very very careful to to find those movements that anyone can do and really just you know be able to move through the movements for those 15 minutes and be able to get some good data out of it yeah I could do that workout yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> the thrusters are the worst ones, but yeah, they, you yeah. know, you'll, they'll, you'll definitely, you know, anyone could do that. Nick yeah. is really good. His his best workout <laughs> is holding a camera for sixty minutes at a time, yeah. like hey, an AMRAP. That is not easy. It's not. If you've never done it before and you think you're fit, hold hold a twelve pound camera in place for sixty minutes in at a time w- in one spot. You in can't one move. Spot. You just have to stay locked <laughs> in. I, I do that when I go hunting. I just stand there. <laughs> that's <laughs> true too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just patience when you're going. No, I re- now I remember taking that test and specifically like with the. Run. I know for me, like I suck at running, and that's just you know the nature of the beast. It, uh, did that have effect? Like with um, you know you have like a running specialist, so somebody came in and take the test, and they're like, hey, I used to run marathons all the time. Da, 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 da. They could probably go up a little bit more because it's kind of like sports specific. Mm-hmm. And then uh, like a crossfitter though, it's probably like just broad in general, and they might get on the row or you know, I mean treadmill and they just take off. Did you see any kind of like a 
relationship like to how what the distance was or how what the I guess the minutes was and the incline was to um, you know your average Joe Smo if there was a certain time limit that the lactate kind of, or the heart rate kind of shot up because I know for me specifically I know when my heart rate gets around like 177 beats uh, a minute because I use a heart rate monitor mm-hmm. a lot that is I'm in my I'm in my trouble zone once right. I reach that I know I'm about to it's about you know shit's about to hit the fan and uh, so I always try to work right in that, right underneath that, right there. Sure. Try to build that capacity. I do too. Up. The difference is, is that me getting around 175 beats per minute is like, you know, like walking out of the car. <laughs> 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 but I'm comfortable. That's there. you thinking yeah. about? That's you thinking about <laughs> your day. next meal? That's, yeah, that's, that's me watching cops. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's really hard to to be able to pinpoint exactly in you know make that comparison. But you're right. Someone who is a marathon runner or 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 just a runner for that matter, it's going to be completely different than, than someone who isn't. Um, and I think that what we are looking at is really just what is your maximal capacity and then how does that translate to you doing reps in that 15 minute MRAP? And really that's the number that mm-hmm. we're looking at. Um, I, I don't, I mean, for, for an un, from a standpoint of what is your maximal capacity, what is your VO2 max, that's irrelevant to me. What, it, what we needed for us for that particular study is we need to know how everybody compares from a maximal oxygen standpoint and then so that we could come back to the 15-minute the AMRAP and say, well, you know, these people who have a VO2 max that's supposed to be excellent or, you know, like a typical mm-hmm. runner or whatever, they're dying when they do after two rounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so oh. you're trying to dispel yeah. the VO2 max to work capacity. Kind exactly. Of like so is it, does it really matter? Does it really matter to have a high VO2 max, but when you're doing these movements for 15 minutes, you're, you die after two rounds, yeah. you know? So, so the measurement of VO2 max really is, it's kind of, let's find out where you are, mm-hmm. and then let's look at how you could do in the 15 minute AMRAP. So for us, the most important part of that study is a 15 minute AMRAP to find out how many reps you're able to do. And that's what we're gonna look at and compare um, you know, down the road and find out where most people are. What is the average size um, and just, and, and like male, female, like do you have completely different heights and everything else like that? Or are you looking for a specific type? Because I, I would imagine that that would have a lot to do if they're all using 45 pound dumbbells, if you've got a 220 pound guy and a 160 pound guy. Uh, well, it's gonna be all pretty much all over the place. What we what we try to do is uh, try to um, match them by um, skill level, if you will, and really just using frame time to determine who who's an elite, who's okay. an intermediate type athlete, I and then you. who's a novice. Okay, cool. Um, you know, height, weight. I mean, everybody's gonna be different, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's a variation of what we're looking at. But really, the their skill level is really what we're sort so of you, targeting. Yeah. So there's pre times that you know, they're telling you like they have right. to fill out. And of yeah, course, and that's the, your friend too. You right. ask that for your friend time, like you have some three minute friends, so right. Six minute. Other than that. So I, I want what I want to find out is what are some studies that you've done in the past that you have seen some results for, and what are they? Is there one in particular that sticks out in your mind? Because I know you've been doing some are quite a few that you found some interesting stuff for maybe you haven't had a chance to publish it mm-hmm. or, or haven't had a chance to talk about it yet. yeah I mean I think the the biggest one that most that we've actually gotten some really good uh, me, um, media attention from and you know we've a- I've been asked to to collaborate for a study I mean to an article for in time magazine men's health oh, wow. uh, uh, outside the lines have called several times so you know we've it's our our studies are starting to get noticed, um, and that's that injury study that we talked about at the beginning. And um, ultimately, from a results standpoint, I could tell you that, again, we had over 700 and 737 individuals is what our total number was. And of those 700 and some, about 84% <coughs> reported um, actually having an injury, some kind of injury. Um, and, and, and we left it open enough that people had to respond, like what kind of injury you've had. It could have been anything from, you know, a, ter- a tear in the hands, a blister, or a shin scrape with a, with a box, or, you know, a torn labrum, or whatever the case may be. We really- Tendonitis in the elbow, yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. So we, you know, we wanted to kind of just, because at the time, we were sort of the first one, no, nothing had ever been published. So we wanted to have this mixed methods designed to try to figure out, yes, you've been injured, but I want to know more about your injury. So what kind of injuries did you have? Um, so 85% said that they've been injured. One of the questions is, you know, did you seek medical attention? So thinking that if you were injured and you sought medical attention, then that's a severe injury. That's something sure, that we yeah. have to look at, right? 
Um, you know, but if, if you tear your hands up, you're probably not going to go to the doctor for that, right. you know. Um, so, so that's kind of how we're identifying how severe these injuries are. So about 10%, 10, 11% or so uh, said that they had a severe injury. So of 730 people, 10% reported a severe injury and then the other five percent left is kind of we couldn't really determine um, mm -hmm. if the, the injury was severe enough that they saw or they had medical attention someone said oh I tore my shoulder up well what does that mean I don't know so I really couldn't make it up so I don't so know if was, they went what to was see. the percentage again it was 85 percent um, was uh, they had a sustained an injury mm -hmm. And this is over the course of one year. One year. So that was the okay. previous year when they took the survey. Okay. So eighty-five percent had, uh, you know, had an injury. Ten percent re reported having an injury that required medical attention. So they actually sought a doctor's yeah. advice, or they had to go to the doctor. That's a pretty large. That, yeah, difference. that's that's a big difference <laughs> because yeah. it's like, oh yeah, I got an injury. It's like, yeah, it's like I hit my head on the barbell like when I wasn't looking when yeah, I was I, walking into the gym. I ripped a blister like, off doing a pull up. Yeah. yeah. Like, so that and that's the point. The point is that you know some yeah. a lot of these people are reporting. Because you, you hear eighty four percent, you're like, oh, not damn. doing that. Like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, but and then, then you the hear ten, you're like. Oh well, and, and, he, and you could even take that even a step further. What you know, those numbers, it's what we call prevalence or uh, or incidence, if you will. If you're reporting the over the you know from from a technical standpoint, those are just ratios. Those are based on you know 730 s individuals took the survey and 85 percent actually reported an injury. So you're looking at I don't know 500 or whatever the number may be, but that really doesn't even tell you the whole story. The whole story is the fact that on an injury rate standpoint, when you look at everyone, because one of the things that you can do with that particular number is that, you know, I know Brandon works out seven days a week, probably multiple times a day, right? <laughs> on a good day, right? No, I used to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at one time. At uh, one point in my well, life. Well, let's just, yeah. you know, for yeah. the example, yeah, for the know, purposes yeah. of the example, you know, maybe he does three watts a day, right? He does a strength and, you know, multiple watts or whatever. I'm just a low schmo. I can barely make it to the gym on, <laughs> you know, two days, three, four days a week. So his exposure is going to be a lot higher than mine to an injury. Just for the right. mere fact that he is in the gym more often than I am. So you can't compare, you know, his percentage versus mine. So we have to look at a number that um, will make us equal. And usually what we end up doing is looking at per thousand hours of a workout. That's so good. per 1,000 hours, per 1,000 hours. It doesn't matter if it takes me, you know, 10 weeks to get 1,000 hours versus the five, you know, the five weeks that I might take Brandon or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. Yeah. So now we're, now we're really looking and comparing Time apples to apples. Yeah. yeah. So what does that do to the, to the numbers at that point? So that when you look at it that way, it's even I don't want to say better, but it, it's de definitely even more telling. And, and what we're finding, it's very similar to what other, um, the other two studies that have already been published. And um, it's been about three injuries per 1,000 hours. Some study looks at 3.1, another study looks at 2.9, 2.7, hours is about 2.9. Um, so it's, it's almost right there. It's verging about three injuries per 1,000 hours. And if you look at the literature, um, you know, you're looking at some studies are reporting 1.5 injuries per 1,000 hours and with walking. Um, <laughs> rugby. It's <laughs> yeah. well, dangerous no, out there. Is yeah. that wild chewing gum? No, or that's like yeah, just exactly. walking. Well, I remember we had the same thing with like physical education yeah. when I was a school teacher exactly. over there doing PE classes. Yeah. No, we still had parents concerned about injury mm -hmm. rates on there. And I was like, honestly, I was like, we're putting in this many hours. Like right. we had exactly how many hours they were putting sure. in each semester in my class. And we're like, you know, with this many hours, if your kid comes every day, you know, w chances are somebody, there's going to be something there statistically sure. happening. But it's not going to be inept. Like your son's not going to come in and die. Right. Yeah, I was like, but he's staying active, he's staying moving. I was like, he's gonna do the same thing when he walks down the street with a book bag. Right. You know, he's still putting himself at, at risk of, you know, hurting himself. Sure. Well, what I've what I've always been, it, what's always been funny to me is that if you walk into a, any gymnastics place for you know for little girls, little guy, little boys, or whatever, is that it's totally normal for you to see a dozen. 20 kids in braces oh, yeah. or chest <laughs> or something and it's not even talked about right yeah. it's like oh yeah she broke her her wrist six times or whatever you know it's just you know it's what it is it's no big deal or whatever and somebody rips a hand and doing pull-ups and it's like it's oh that wild. is the devil 85 right? you know? percent injuries it's just, but it's just the <laughs> I way told I mean, you <laughs> you know it's tennis right which by the way um <laughs> brandon which brandon is being sponsored by tennis the sport the entire sport is <laughs> the entire sport is 
tennis. <laughs> Tire well, sport or tennis? Well, actually, that's more on that later. I, yeah. yeah, more on that later. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I talk about the urine. Um, but yeah, so I mean, you know, tennis, you know, football, like you know. It's it's totally normal and accepted, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but for whatever reason, maybe because it's new, um, maybe because it's it's fitness based, you know, or maybe whatever, right? Um, it's just it's it's not accepted and it's not okay in CrossFit, which isn't right. It should be right. or functional fitness in general. But and then also too, uh, probably a lot of the injury rates. At least you know I've seen like personally is people that come into CrossFit. And um, or they come in, you know, they see the CrossFit Games and now they see grid, you know, and they see all these like sports in there Mm -hmm. and all this, you know, glory that's happening. They immediately think, okay, I have to train like a competitor. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go follow this competitor's blog. I'm going to go follow this competitor's blog. That's where they fuck up. I'm like, dude, you (laughs) have just started CrossFit. What makes you think that you can handle that capacity? Well, it's something I got to do. Everybody else is doing it. Well, I mean, that's that whole thing. You go jump off a building. Everybody else is doing it. Yeah, exactly. I was like, it took me years to build this work capacity before i even started crossfit i was training my butt off in other areas i'm like you're 18 years old and also you haven't even had that opportunity yet it's so and and, and also you put that into your study like what how long have you been doing it and what program mm -hmm. are you following so not so much on the we do have a question as to you know do you train in an affiliate or not um so we're we're gonna look at that's a good one that's our that's our next uh sort of the next step and and looking at 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 some of that data but um i think one of the, the biggest points that you bring up you know it's it's the people who who are just starting, you know, that want to train like a competitor, you know, who who want to train like a, a games athlete, you just don't have the capacity, and you probably don't even have the mobility or, nor the strength to do any of that right. stuff. Capacity, mobility, or, or, or skill. The skill, yeah. right? Pain endurance. <coughs> sure. So one of the reasons. <laughs> well, they got the pain endurance. They're gonna go to the pain. That's why. That's why they're. They that's have why the they pain. Put, that's why they put. That's why they put. Oh, I'm hurt. What's that? <laughs> We're going to go to the death. Yeah. No, to the pain. So yeah. so one of the questions that we ask is, you know, how long have you been working out how long have you been doing crossfit and one of the things is the highest rate of injury when we're talking about those you know injuries per 1000 hours the highest rates happen in those people who are working out less than three days at a, a week and have been doing it for less than a year uh-huh. so you're talking about endurance you're talking about skill you're talking about strength adaptation so it adaptations yeah. it makes sense yeah. And, and you know, I think, and I, I'm sure that if, if there were studies, and there probably are, of people that are working out at home without sure. the supervision, not in CrossFit, but in anything, General, doing yeah. bicep curls, whatever it is, all the stupid gym fails you see people like trying to do karate in the basement. I mean, I'm sure <laughs> there's more people getting hurt with nunchucks <laughs> in, in their parents' basement. <laughs> Then there are people doing thrusters yeah. in a driveway well, somewhere. You know, it's it's. Uh, no, you go ahead, go ahead, doctor. Oh no, I was just gonna say. <laughs> really, all I was gonna say was that you know I had a conversation with a friend of mine last night, and they asked me. You know, we're talking we're talking about CrossFit, and they asked you know if, if my girlfriend. Well, of course, I, you're talking about CrossFit. You're a CrossFitter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I apologize so for that. A CrossFitter and a vegan walks into a bar. <laughs> the only reason I know is because they said it to everybody <laughs> immediately. Everybody. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, anyway, I was I was talking about something else and and uh, they uh, started asking us and they they mentioned that oh well you know we have we saw this guy at la fitness and, and uh, i mean i'm not affiliated with la fitness in any way so don't take this <laughs> as a as a plug in any way uh, but they walked into this gi- this gym and and the girl was doing one-legged burpees and their question to me was is that crossfit i was like i don't know i've never heard that before i've been in the industry for 10 years <laughs> and i've never seen act. someone do a one-legged thing. burpee <laughs> I think the garage games has done one legged burpees. Oh, um, they did a three legged bear crawl, but it looked like a one legged burpee going I, across the ground. I, I did a competition <laughs> one time where it was a one legged burpee, and I don't remember what competition it was, but it was like it was a pretty large competition. Anyways, yeah. But I mean, yeah, I mean, that the, <clears throat> the perception is that, you know, all this odd movements, it must be, it must be CrossFit, right? And that's, I think that's where everybody kind of yeah. just yeah. gets Sometimes like, it's just something you know, somebody like made a, up. Like yeah. getting back on the serious note, like I had a, I had an athlete today specifically come to the gym and he was like, Brandon, I want to. I want to compete at the next level. He's like, I don't want to be a regional athlete. I don't want to be a games athlete, but I just want to be able to go to a local competition sure. and be able to hold my own. You know, what what program do I need to do to get there? And I was like, you don't need to do any program. You need to get your mobility right. I was like, you can't even do a squat clean. You can't even do a right. squat snatch yet. So you can't really progress that level. Right. And that's like the biggest thing. You go to these local comps and you watch like the overhead squat and you're just like, oh, that person right. is about to happen. 
so, so yeah. it's about to happen mm-hmm. just seeing an overhead squat you know and it's just a matter of time and I think that a lot of people don't have the patience and I think that comes back to our culture in America mm-hmm. you know like I'm gonna sure. I'm gonna sign up for CrossFit and I'm gonna get fit in right. three months I'm gonna reach my goals and I'm gonna go compete so that I die right. and instead of them being like all right let's take this day by day step by step and really focus in what do I have to do sure and yeah. communicating with a coach and just putting the hours in <clears throat> like I have some people that come in 20 minutes before class starts because they have to stretch out their shoulders sure. and get their shoulders warmed up and they do specific mm-hmm. exercises and the people that do that every day religiously they come in they don't better. have shoulder problems right. you know sure. i mean it's just you know how much value do you take in the small things compared and to the large unfortunately picture. it's really hard to have those to, to quantify that in a research oh study. yeah you can't oh, sure. yeah no, you, so can. you just can't you, you just can't really do that but um but you know I, I think of the largest part of it is people that are training without the supervision and with that knowledge and you, like you said it's a lot of its patience a lot of its ego Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then a lot of it is just ignorance, right? So, I, you know, and, and that's why I really feel like, you know, that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to give more information and help people that can afford, um, and, no, you know, say shameless plug for garage athletes, but, you know, try to help people um, give them more information in all aspects that they need to do for any type of training that they want to do if they can't afford that that good coach, you know, that great facility and, you know, and, you know, whatever equipment, whatever it is or whatever. Because there's, I mean, there's there's a buttload of videos out there on YouTube and half of them are wrong, right. you know. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and just like if you're learning how to play the guitar, you know, there's plenty of videos out there to do that, you know, but you can also <laughs> learn how to I do it I still suck at wrong. the guitar. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing that I told my students is it's check your sources totally. you know, yeah, who's yeah. doing the teaching I mean because anybody could teach anybody could get up there and get a YouTube channel and do whatever but who are these people and and there are really good coaches who are providing a service like you know what what are you guys doing here and uh, but there are some really good people who are not into it and they're just they have a channel and all they want is the followers mm-hmm. and they pay for the followers because that's salesman. how they make money they're just exactly. good salesmen. So, uh, you I know, feel like I'm a good sources. salesman, too. You're yeah. a really good salesman. <laughs> it's the I get, voice. I get a lot of ideas from you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, Brandon, to your Some point. Some of them are good, too. <laughs> yeah. And I think to your point, it's not only an athlete's perspective, but also as a coach. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be able to understand and know your athlete. You know, not everybody's going to be that regional game athlete. Not everybody's going to be that game athlete. So understanding the limitations of that particular athlete and just being honest, that's, you know, it's not just a membership. It's an individual who, right. and I'm not a coach. I mean, I, you know, obviously. Um, yes, you are. Gr- you got your L1. Well, uh, <laughs> that's the highest level you can get, that, baby. That's, that's the beginning, right? <laughs> um, but but no, I mean, from, from a standpoint of, you know, being in the industry, not necessarily in CrossFit, but in the industry for, for many years, is you have to understand who your population is and, you know, in my original work with clinical populations, you know, so the sickest of the sick. So I have to understand who those people are to be able to create any type of exercise program, whether it's CrossFit, whether it's whatever else. So really understanding and knowing your athlete makes a huge difference. Yeah, I have, I've had several people walk in my door and they come in and they, we do like an assessment, functional movement assessment. And I just tell them straight in, I just tell them straight up. I'm like, you're not ready for what yeah, we do. Right. And, uh, so we need to do some one-on-ones and, you sure. know, for you, it might just be a lot of stretching, a lot of activation and getting your butt on a rower. Right. See, Brandon, that's, that's the it. difference is I do the same thing. I just word it differently. <laughs> <laughs> that's where, that's where you go wrong. <laughs> it's like Brandon doesn't mobility. It's like, dude, you're all screwed up. Um, like, no, I mean, I'll, the, I'll I'm work a, with I'm you, a, I'm but optim- I'm optimist not a pessi- pessimist when it comes out like dude I, there's no uh, hope. I'll go. I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's optimism. It's like, okay, I'll, 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 I'll walk walk they got 299 them. Oreos over here for sale. I know personally, and we're gonna get you some, and we're gonna go to your house and hang out. And do <laughs> Brandon, Brandon, can't you be positive? No, I'm positive that he's never gonna be fit. I'm, <laughs> you have to go to him and be like, you know what? After talking to you, I think what's gonna work best for you is uh, Zumba and Pilates. <laughs> no, that, <laughs> and that, well, that's that. gonna give Zumba some more injury rates. That's true. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Oh, damn, I, Zumba. damn Zumba. Damn Zumba. I had I had somebody. I want to make I want to make day. a Wii CrossFit game. So this they is got Zumba. They got Zumba Wii. We can make a CrossFit Wii. Somebody's gonna make a CrossFit reality show. I know that. 
Well, um, I mean, they try. Well, now they are. They got a lot of money on that. This is funny. This is this is a bit of since we're talking about research and stuff here. So and and people being injured or whatever. I have an athlete of mine that that's injured right now, um, and he's like, "Hey, Justin, um, I'm gonna have to. You need to scale me back or whatever. I, I hurt myself. I'm like, oh, what'd you do? When'd you do it? Because I teach his class. I'm his coach. So I'm like, oh, what what did I do? You know, like did I was you know. He's like, I hurt my neck. I'm like, oh, what were you doing? He's like, I was in church, and um, and I was I was you know clapping, and um, somebody said my name, and I looked up and to the right, and um, I like tweaked my neck. That's I'm what like, all it takes. You seriously, did, you, did, you didn't warm so, up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like, I, I think, and I was talking, and I was like, but you got to calm that shit down, dude. You can't. I mean, you're not you're not a spring chicken. You got to watch church out. Do you like, go to? You gotta <laughs> yeah, do, yeah. There, guys, don't go to that church because you're going to get hurt. Gonna get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. That's not there. a good preacher Relig- over yeah. there. Yeah. Did you imagine some, a study coming out and saying religion is dangerous for you? <laughs> I'm sure there's one or two studies. There's that probably been. studies out there. I feel like we it. should make one. Wait, we could do that. <laughs> yeah, Yuri, work on that. I'm work on, on it. That. I'm I, I, I want to see the Christianity. Um, there should be a like question. Rate Injury of, rate. Oh, my gosh. Every, that's, all right, look. Is it only at church or just if you're a Christian? to get injured is it kind of like that should we tell everybody <laughs> i feel like horrible now like people are gonna think i'm like anti-religion or something like that <laughs> the no, joke didn't land they probably will they probably are <laughs> I, like, I like how everybody kind of looks at each other like ha 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 but he did so i mean he would in, in a study like that you know his answer would be in that study is that yes he got injured over the course of the year but it wasn't in the gym. It wasn't even training. He was sitting upright, looking up and to the right while clapping. And for whatever reason, you know, now maybe he was already sore. You know, who knows what happened? Can right? this be our health tips section where we say don't clap, look up to the right at the same yeah. time just to be safe? <laughs> yeah, on the cross. So, yeah, and, and, you know, one of the th- – I, and I guess that, you know, again, that's when we start doing survey data. And, and trust me, I've gotten a lot of, uh, you know, flashback on, on, oh, well, it's just a survey. So you can't really count that as real research. And, and you know what? You probably lay. There are limitations on, on survey data, but we got to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The yeah. best way the best way for me to know if if what is the, the actual injury rate of an, of an athlete is, you know, talk to Brandon and say, hey, Brandon, I'm going to follow you for the next 12 months. And then just really follow his log and find out how often he gets hurt. That's creepy. Which is, it's pretty <laughs> creepy. <laughs> Brandon, how did you get up this morning? <laughs> that, that would be his but the problem is, you know, if we had, if we had 10 boxes that actually did exactly the same thing day in, day out, then it will be easy. But how many boxes do you have that do exactly the same thing day in, day out that yeah. I can account for? Yeah, probably no, yeah. not. not, not zero. Zero. That's, yeah. that's the beauty, and then that's like the crazy thing. That's sure. That's the ugliness of CrossFit. That's the beauty of CrossFit. It's the beauty of CrossFit. Like, it's the beauty of CrossFit really but, you know, it's, it, but yeah. it's just make, it makes it really, really tough though for like researchers mm-hmm. because you don't know the background, you yeah. don't know where they're coming from. You can look at a box and be like, maybe add that into your research. Be like, which box do you go to and then injury rate? But then again, it's like who participated out of that, right. out of that population of that box? You sure. know, is it just certain people that really like to see where mm-hmm. they're at, or is it just people, you know, just everybody's right. coming in. Unless you try to make something mandatory doing it. Right. You know, it's really, really tough. So when are these studies, you're saying you're, you're talking about them potentially being published in, like, time and stuff like that? Do you have a timeline on well, that? The, uh, the no, time. No pun intended. Yeah, no. The <laughs> the Time magazine, that was that was published sometime last year, um, you know, 2014, uh, early March. The Men's Fitness was published somewhere in May, I believe. Um, the one that I'm currently working on is should, I'm, I'm hoping to get it done before the end of the summer um, at least and again it's you know it's submitted there's a process um, I'm hoping to go to a, um, a pretty big medical journal just so that it could be published and in, in, in something that it's it's way out there in the medical community and medical f- you know professionals could look at it and say well this is doesn't seem to be as as dangerous as the media makes it to be because it really has been a media issue right it definitely has been a, a mainstream media um, issue more than anything else you know the the NBCs, the Fox, the you know the Time magazines, the Men's Health and Fitness. Those are the people who have picked it up and kind of just ran with well, it. They and need those ratings, you know. Right, exactly. They need to sell magazines. They need to sell you know uh, consumer spots, um, commercial spots. So that unfortunately <coughs> has been sort of the driving force around all this. 
but we really don't have any really research-based evidence other than two studies that actually looked at injury. That's it. There's yeah. two studies, and then we have an abstract that was published last year, and I'm working on the paper right now. But unfortunately, you know, I'm a professor. I also <laughs> teach three other classes, yeah. and I have 90 <laughs> kids in one class. You know, so, so it's not the only thing I do. I wish it was, but it isn't. So there are limitations to, to the amount of time, and, and it takes time. Yep. Yeah. So you guys send money to Yuri at Yuri, <laughs> what, what's your email address? No, Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> just I am no, about to get just fired. Donate to <laughs> Kennesaw. Yeah. Just donate to Kennesaw State kosher. University. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. HQ. Where can you? Where can they send the check now, to? Speaking. <laughs> now speaking. Speaking of HQ, have they contacted you? Yes. And uh, good or bad, we have a good relationship. Okay, yeah, cool. I was about we to have say, I mean, I bet you do because y'all had Mike Gerard, correct? You know, he was a student there with you, and mm-hmm. he, I mean, he's the the uh, was the flow master, you know. I mean, so I know having Mike there all the time kind of gave you a little bit more legitimacy, yeah, because Mike had that on you know, he, he had an inside opinion, yeah. I actually just had a just had a, uh, a conversation with one of the HQ uh, media guys, and and one of the things that I told him, I was like, you know, a lot of my colleagues are afraid to publish um, anything related to CrossFit because they think they're going to get sued, mm. you know, because of what's happened or whatever. And, you know, some of the editors, um, good or bad, journals. yeah, whatever, yeah. they just don't, they don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I said is I listen, you know, for either good or bad, I know that I have a relationship with, you know, these guys and, and some of the guys in HQ. Um, so I feel comfortable that if something comes up, we're going to have a conversation about whatever it was. And, you know, and we talked about it and I, and, and I said, and I appreciate that from a standpoint, from a professional standpoint, because I know that you're not going to call me. We're recording our conversations and not, you know, put it out there in a blog. Well, well that puts on. you in a really good spot. Absolutely. Too, because, you know, Absolutely. you keep that, those lines and, you know, up. Absolutely. HQ, like, um, you know, Russell, he gets a lot of flack all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, met, I've known Russell. We were friends, you know, we don't talk anymore, but, you know, feel confident in saying this but it's like just like crossfit they protect Absolutely. what they love sure and it's just like any other business owner like if somebody says anything bad about me i'm going to protect what i love Absolutely. when it comes to my business Absolutely. and so many people will give them flack about everything that they say coming back but if that yeah. happens to any other company that company does the same thing exactly and they just the news just doesn't publicize it as much as we do and plus right. we're stuck in the crossfit community and that's all we talk about so that's our small world yeah we're in this fitness and bubble so, and, and it's, it's what everybody thinks about it right. is oh, funny oh, exactly. crossfit hq is a big bad wolf no they love what they've created just like everybody else and so they're yeah. protecting what Absolutely. they've created yeah. and, I can't and what they've you. created is beautiful it's wonderful and it's changed more lives in the past what five years than any, any other, other yep. fitness model yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and tybo mm-hmm. and all those guys you know chuck norris and his total gym and well, all those guys <laughs> I don't know I mean, let's not talk about <laughs> <laughs> okay let's not talk just about got real serious in here next thing you know behind your head <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere, so Taking yeah. Taking up through the ceiling. Just Taking last week, I was by. I was eating some. I was at a restaurant and I was sitting at the bar, not drinking alcohol because you know, of course, I'm 100% paleo. Um, <laughs> but I was um, I was sitting there and I overheard one of the waitresses or the bar or bartender or whatever talking to a lady that was there saying, um, "Oh, you should try CrossFit. I do CrossFit." And her late and, and she just in her as stuck up as could possibly be, you know, persona said, "Oh, I'm not doing CrossFit. I don't want to get hurt." Um, and that was I was and I looked at it and I didn't like say hey I'm Justin I own a CrossFit or I run a CrossFit gym, um, but you know I was like oh wh- why do you say that have you, did you have you done anything gotten hurt and I just started talking to her or whatever and long story short after talking to her for about 10 15 minutes she was a triathlete and she does tennis and I got about six uh, injuries out of her uh-huh. I got about six injuries out of her from tennis and just talking to her he's sure. like yeah I've got this I had ACL and this and that and then after about 10 15 minutes I was like man. That tennis is some tough stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I was like, I was like, why, why do you do that if it's just so crazy? Like, I just love it. I was like, oh, okay. Well, you know, CrossFit's probably kind of the same way. You know, if you like something that you do and you're seeing stuff out of it, may, maybe you're okay with, um, you know, having a little bit of tweak here and there because it's it's kind of part of movement and mm-hmm. being alive. Yeah, you know, but that goes to show perception too. Like she just assumed that if she did it, she was gonna get hurt. Like when she went, like yeah, she's as gonna soon go as she walked, like, like when you walk through the door of a CrossFit gym, hurt. they hit yeah. you with a baseball bat, <laughs> <laughs> and that's your initiation. <laughs> you have to do a box jump to get into the door. It's not a bad idea, actually. It's actually a really good idea. Before you walk through the door, you have to snatch. There's a uh, there's a old thing about Dan Gable. I'm a wrestler, you know, so I love I love wrestling stories. And Dan Gable was the greatest. And, uh, and then he was a coach. He would like sit up with a basket of apples and watch practice. And he would chuck apples. At his 
<laughs> you can dodge an apple. You can dodge a ball. <laughs> like just chucking them, throwing them. I mean, like Nolan Ryan Express at them, no matter where they are. <laughs> so, Brandon, do you fall asleep at night to Vision Quest, the movie? Oh Can yeah! You just turn on, oh, yeah. on the Vision, TV and go Vision to Quest. That's it. That one in the the new generation Iron is like my new favorite. Oh yeah! Have you oh oh yeah, oh yeah! Absolutely. I don't, generation yeah. Iron, oh, dude. I'm all about that bodybuilding. Amazing, Doctor Yuri. If you haven't seen that, it might take you to bodybuilding. Oh, I was yeah. close. I had to go grab a, bar, a curl bar and okay. start I'll doing some curls. That. Oh yeah, it was really good. <laughs> and I had no shame in that whatsoever. No, when I, came in. I even did a drop set. I did a drop set. I put like four tens on the side. I do ten reps, take a ten off. Two ten reps, take a ten off. You know me. I, I still had do the that. biggest pump ever. I still do that. I, <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get. I've been trying to get cable machines in our CrossFit gym for a while now. We just don't have room for it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing Good wrong with doing a uh, superset and burpees with pec flies. <laughs> Ooh, your chest, you will not be able to press up. You'll be doing the worm. You're talking about <laughs> entire workout. You're talking about um, pre fatigue. Yeah. Oof. Um, anyways, it. all right. So, so my yeah. Basically, what what I'm getting from you, Yuri, is is, is that um, that we are seeing is that yes, you get injured doing crossfit you can get injured okay. doing crossfit let's not just say crossfit let's say functional yeah, functional fitness, fitness. okay sure. yeah functional movement exercise human movement whatever. you can yeah. get hurt yeah, <laughs> you, yeah exactly, i mean you're gonna do exactly. anything you're gonna get hurt oh, right? and, so, and that's yeah. the point it, yeah. it's, it's like yes you can get injured no it's not necessarily more than any other type of training method though sure so bodybuilding triathlete training tennis, tennis you know gymnastics all these other things they all have about the same um, I guess markers or, or numbers percentage of people per thousand hours, right. as we said. Number, yeah. So so absolutely, you can get hurt doing CrossFit. Absolutely, you can get hurt rolling out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. So anyone saying that you can get hurt or that they don't want to do CrossFit because they're going to get hurt, it's, it's not really, I mean, if you look at the numbers and if you look at the research, regardless of what smear jobs have been done on functional fitness in the past, you don't really have a leg to stand no. on saying that's your reasoning for not Correct. doing it. Well, There's it seems like this whole thing started because somebody just got lazy and wrote a sentence in a previous. <laughs> 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 it's probably not quite that simple, but. <laughs> well, it, it, it actually is it's as simple as that, though, because... <coughs> What got me thinking about this whole thing was a, an, an article, a blog post that some PT posted up in, uh, and I think I remember, I think if I remember correctly, his name is Dr. Peterson or Patterson out of Colorado. And he came up with, you know, some, you know, blog post that, you know, his sister or someone he knew had got rhabdo out of, uh, you know, doing CrossFit. And he went on for, I don't know how many pages, talk about how bad it was, but had no no evidence whatsoever to to claim um it was just based on his sister one it was person. just one person one case study so and his experience study. his experience he, he, wrote, as that, a he wrote that out of pure emotion you right know? exactly yeah. so so that's really what kind of got to start you know got me started so it does it, it did happen out of See, you there, know, one someone of, of <laughs> just writing a sentence or a blog post well or people whatever, gotta so. be more responsible when they're so, writing things down but, you know you know it's it's funny like i know we're getting kind of off target now but it's like it's more and more people are starting to write write bad blogs or yes. anything just to get followers right. yeah mm -hmm. absolutely exactly like and i should go write a thing like i will never do crossfit again and write a blog about it and i'm sure it would just go everywhere sure. oh you know we'll just, now just title it that and every then write post it every post including this one that we put up on our website yeah. is going to be some really negative direct even though it's going to be a positive it could be like showing you how to do a front squat but it's going to say why crossfit will kill you yeah, that's going to be the and then it's just going to be you doing a front squat and people, and people look at it. People, people look views. at it, and there's going to be all these comments. What the hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> all you didn't kinds even of die. down. It's like, but, and, and, but I think going back to you know to to the the main thing, I think the worst thing that one can do, it's just sit down, just be non-active. Yeah. So so if so, the fear so if the fear is it's not getting hurt because you're doing CrossFit, that's fine. Don't do CrossFit, but do something else. But yeah. don't don't give you know CrossFit a functional movement, Brandon, as you said, um, you know to kind of just stay away from the brand, if you will. But functional movement, just do something. 
you know, whatever it may be, whether it's functional Absolutely. training, whether it's yeah. cycling, or, you know, tennis, whatever the case may be, you know, just just get up. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, functional training, CrossFit, whatever you want to call it, has been so successful at doing is getting people who would have never done any of this stuff exactly. to do what they're doing. It's depussifying America. America. When I had a, I had a client a last thing. night and he, he was just he just he had a bad it. couple of weeks. You know, he travels all the time working, sure. you know, and he'll come in for like two months and he gets a hard and he's seen great gains and then all of a sudden he's gone for a month right. or two and then he comes back and man he's just dragging and i was like man and he's always trying to get his buddies in and last night he was just having a terrible workout you can tell he's just really down himself walked over and was like man what are your friends doing right now I said they're laying they're at home on the couch i said and what are you doing right and he says i'm here working i was like you are better than them right. I was like, this is what makes you <laughs> and better. call them, call them and like, tell them this that. is what makes this is what makes you better you know is doing this it's true. and then i was like finish your set <laughs> you know, and i walked away <laughs> it's still your set <laughs> um we, we, we've got an eight you uh a travel team um, that we coach on Sundays or whatever and it's great to hear the coaches which you know they're just dads I mean they're a serious um, you know, the travel team but it's just the dads coaching them and um, and we go through and I'll work with them and, and movements and trying to get them you know motor recruitment patterns and type you know just stability and things like that <clears throat> and um, it's great to hear them talking to them because the main thing they say when they all put them down on a knee is like I want you guys to remember that while you guys are here sure. hurting as much as it hurts your competition is sitting on the couch eating Cheetos and I remember that from when I played ball oh, yeah. when I was a kid I'm like I wonder if a coach told him that and like so it's the same thing that you said or whatever so it's like regardless of what they're doing they're doing something right so it's, yeah. it's kind of the same thing no I mean it's the exact same thing it's all I mean whoever works hard you get results and I mean the same thing happens in business people work hard they reach failure they have their bad days they have their good days you know and then right. you know I mean they just stay at it they don't just quit you know I mean you all have a bad day you just have to find well, that's what's, what's most important is how you handle your bad days you know? yeah yeah you know, get in the get in the gym, work it off, and then walk out of the gym and leave everything there, and then go handle your business. And you we know. just we just presented some uh, some research over in uh, Jacksonville at the the American College of Sports Medicine Regional Conference. And you know, when I got you know we got up and kind of presented some of the same information that we've talked about here. And you know, at the end, I said, look, I don't really care if it's if you call it CrossFit, if you call it cross training, if you call it whatever you call it. The, the fact of the matter is that you know the open as what it is has included, you know. What, what was the last year? 220,000 oh, people yeah. uh, around the yeah. world to do five, the same, the same five workouts over five weeks. What other, <laughs> you know, fitness program you could think of? Tybo. Or <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn, Billy Blanks. Blanks. <laughs> really. Billy All right, well, there Blanks. goes my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> no, just about to look, go ahead. I'm no, sorry. but I mean, you know, what other, as if, you know, to me, yeah, I'm a researcher, but I'm, I'm more of a physical activity guy. Just let's get people active. Mm -hmm. What other program is out there that can't do that? There aren't many. If, I don't know of any. Yeah, yeah. I really don't. I mean, and last year that last workout, I always talk about this with people. That yeah. last workout, fourteen five, when they made that announcement and they said there is no time cap, you must finish the workout. Like in my mind, like as an athlete, I was like, oh, dude, this is gonna be awesome. But in my coach's mind, I was like. This We're is gonna be here get all really night. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna get really thirty minute. Heats. People are about to meet their inner demons right. and, oh, wow. and and have that and have that spiritual warfare in the middle of a sure. workout. And it was amazing to see the people that finished that last burpee when they got done. I mean, everything else in life was easy <laughs> yeah. at that point. There yeah. was nothing hard in their life because they just finished the hardest thing right. they've ever done. So I had mean, a friend up north that did that workout, and she just kind of started doing it or whatever. I think she actually left and came back the next day and finished it, and she posted like a <laughs> like a like a twenty two hour score yeah. or something like that. But <laughs> damn it, she awesome. came back. She came back. She finished it. Right? Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. we had one. I mean, I think took took the person like forty eight minutes, mm -hmm. but I mean, they were there and they did it. And that's what it was. It was so awesome right. to see that. And where else are you going to get something that brings sure. some people together universally? Like Absolutely. They can plug a number into a computer and their friend can look at that or somebody else can look at that and be like, they put 48 minutes down. They must have struggled the entire mm -hmm. time. I, I even and tell that's people like a like, thumbs up. You right. know, if that could be a Facebook post, that yeah. would get, you know, 2,000 totally thumbs up. Yeah. Look, so we're going to do the workouts anyways. Or 220,000. Even if you don't want to give them your $20. <laughs> even sure. if you don't want to give HQ yeah. your $20. Do the workout and use Come a free on, leaderboard. Right, yeah. they're, I mean, they're not, they know people do do that like right. they're making their money you know what i mean like so i mean i'm sure you're talking about 220 i'm sure there's plenty of other people that did those workouts that, that didn't, didn't get the 20 dollars right, 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 right. right. 
Um, so yeah, it's, I, I, I totally agree. Like, I love there's it. There's not a whole lot that does it. Obviously, we're biased because you know we do CrossFit or we do functional fitness, whatever we would call it, um, or functional training. And you know, but the bottom line, the research still says when you dig down deep and when you start looking at the actual injuries that happen, um, it's. It's no different than any other sport out yeah. there, regardless yeah. of how young or how old the sport may be, whatever you want to call it. The, you know, we use CrossFit as, as, our, as our term that we use in our survey, and, and we ask people, you know, who CrossFit, how often do you get hurt? You know, we don't go out and ask, you know, runners, we're not asking cyclists, we're not asking triathletes, we're asking people who have done CrossFit for a minimum of three months to report their injuries. That's all we're doing. And that's yeah. where the numbers we're getting, you know, <laughs> and we've doing it for three years. And, and I'm, I'm very hopeful that we're probably the only research group that has that kind of data right now. Um, there's another group in uh, Kansas State that are also doing some really good work up there related to CrossFit. Um, they actually have their own box within the university, so that well, kind of sets them up. Well, yeah, but you guys are still going to beat their but ass. Have, so but y'all have you. y'all have a little facility in your in your. We do in uh, in your building. You I've haven't seen been it. there in a long I've time, haven't you? Oh, they take it out. It oh might. no, no it's, <laughs> gotten better. Better. it's gotten better. It's gotten better. Oh man, <laughs> you See, guys are welcome to come in. I graduated from Kennesaw State, but I graduated before they did all of this. Oh, you should come check it out. I wish I could. I wish I could have been a guinea pig. Now you could always be a guinea pig. With the resource they have. <laughs> yeah, open invitation. Training, training. I think would have been a lot cooler uh, <laughs> up there at Kennesaw State, being able to get hooked up to everything and test doing my testers. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we're, we are definitely a, in in a uh, you know fortunate uh, situation to have the the equipment that we have and and everything that we have to be able to do these studies for sure. Um, and and again, we're we're going to continue to do that. That's kind of a sort of. That's where I have my, my, my line of research. I'm gonna stick to high intensity training specifically and, and, and you know, the CrossFit modality. And the goal, I'm, I'm actually starting another pro uh, project working with a clinical population. So I'm bringing the, you know, the, the functional training, if you will, high intensity training stuff to, to you know, diabetics. And, it's you know, it's just really with clinical work. It's, it's cool to see people like you where you're at because when you think about that, you, like you said, you, you hear so many bad things about it, but it's cool to see someone like you doing it. And I know we actually have someone in our gym that works with with you mm -hmm. and that's how we got hooked up yep. to, together or whatever so it's very cool to see she and it's also really cool that she goes to our gym when she has one there i didn't even realize that so yeah, yeah. that's great I mean, it, it doesn't coach. doesn't like almost the entire department in exercise science do crossfit no uh, well, I mean, I just think, three I think of okay, three of well, then I must know a small. Um, sm <laughs> yeah. I, I have a very small world you know, since I got married and have a child. Fifty, 50 percent of the of so the department, or so you're good. Yeah. So McLester, he still hasn't bitten the bug yet. No, no, he hasn't even been on a treadmill in years. <laughs> Come on, McLester. <laughs> uh, Brandon said that, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Please let him listen to this because he still owes me wings and beer. <laughs> Speaking of wings and beer, I need one. Well, guys, um, man, Yuri, thank you so much for coming Absolutely. out. That's that, it's it's really kind of cool to you know to hear it from someone like you, and because you read the studies and, and you try and like extrapolate like you know what you, what you want to, and not just hear like all the negative stuff from it or whatever. But when you kind of put it in perspective like that, it makes a lot more sense. Sure. So I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's actually kind of neat. Yeah, it's great to hear. Um, so. Thank you so much. Um, hopefully, we'll get to have you on again. Hopefully, Absolutely. we'll get to uh, come up there and, and get our butts kicked at KSU. And Anytime. <laughs> and obviously, if you're ever bored, come up there and work out with oh, uh, I will, Tiffany definitely. up there's at the garage. Yeah, so. definitely. Thanks, you guys, for having me. And there's always a mask available for someone in the, on the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I, I got to get back in CrossFit yeah. shape again before I did that, man. I worked out with Brandon this morning and... I got my butt kicked, man. It was it was rough. Oh, you held your own. We didn't. Uh, that's did nice of you, Brandon. He did good. <laughs> <laughs> he did good. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, that's it. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. See right. you. See you.